It promises to be big business in Massachusetts, and Eric Basidio hopes to get one of the coveted 35 medical marijuana treatment center licenses the Department of Public Health will hand out sometime after May 1st. The state regulations are still in the works, making things hazy for the prospective shop owner. Is it confusing right now? Yes. <laughs> about 50 people packed into a room at the Brookline Public Library. What about tax issues? All were here to listen to legal advice from the Massachusetts Medical Marijuana Dispensers Association, a group headed up by lawyer Bob Karp. For starters, Karp says this will be an all-cash business. Remember, the federal government still considers marijuana an illegal drug. The credit card companies, most of them have federal licenses, realize that it's a controlled substance. They will not get involved in something where they could lose their licensing. The treatment centers or dispensaries, which will be spread out across the state, will be nonprofits, but that doesn't mean they won't make money. A nonprofit can make a profit, but it has to distribute the profit to its employees. It has to do something charitable. Um, People are not running this just to donate money. We all know that. But Eric Basidio says he's not only interested because of the possible money to be made, he also has a higher purpose. For me, it's about the patients, getting them the care they need, and especially with uh, my family member, that's where it really goes and hits the heart with me. On the damage from tonight's storm. Our Jennifer Egan is live in Wareham, Massachusetts with the latest. Jen? Well, Mike LaToya, this storm moved through in just a matter of minutes, but it left behind some pretty significant damage. Take a look here. This tree trunk impaled the roof of this home. The homeowner was inside at the time. He was on the first floor. He is okay, though. Just a few streets away, more damage. Just amazing. It was like a tornado went through. A fast moving storm whipped through Wareham, Massachusetts Tuesday night. Jennifer McCarran lives on Swift's Beach Road. It was like a windstorm came through. Our front door was open. We could not close it. Um, my daughter was screaming to close the door. The door went flying open. We could not get it closed. Strong winds uprooted this tree just a few houses down from McCarran, taking down power lines. We had no idea what happened. You know, we just knew something had happened. There are several areas. Um, where trees are down and so forth, but I think this particular area is the largest we have with uh, power outages and so forth. Now a day after Sandy largely sidestepped this community, power is out and cleanup is just beginning. We're getting multiple reports of power outages, uh, trees down, transformer fires, um, flooding in different areas around town, but it um, came in just as fast as it left. Now, residents here say the power basically just flickered during Sandy. It didn't go out during any extended period of time. The power is out tonight here on this street and on some of the adjacent streets. Then you can go a few streets over and things look pretty much untouched and the power has been on. This is an NSTAR community and we have already seen their trucks in the neighborhood. Latoya? The after effects of Sandy are really impressive. Uh, Jennifer, we appreciate this. A story tonight of fire and ice, a fire battle from every angle. The extreme conditions only making this fight that much harder. Good evening, I'm Mike Nikitas. And I'm Latoya Edwards. That scene is the latest in a number of fires across Massachusetts. Our Jennifer Egan joins us live from Lawrence with tonight's top story. Jennifer? Well, Latoya, the fire here along South Broadway Street has been completely knocked down. There are no serious injuries to report. Of course, the real story here, the cold. There were chunks of snow and ice like this one all over the street in front of the building, making already harsh conditions for firefighters even worse. Close up, it looks like it snowed along South Broadway Street in Lawrence, Massachusetts. But that icy snow is actually from fire hoses. They're spray floating back down, forming slush and ice on the ground. The biggest thing is, you know, just trying to keep the guys uh, comfortable working because it's so cold. Um, as you can see, um, you know, <laughs> like an icicle here. Most of the firefighters battling the four alarm blaze were covered in ice. Crews rushed to the scene around 5 Thursday afternoon. Two people living inside the building got out safely. The conditions in frigid weather, a strain on departments across the region. Two Lawrence firefighters were injured earlier Thursday fighting smoke and flames along Ware Street. One firefighter had uh, injury to his knee. 
Uh, another firefighter uh, you know, was actually having some chest pain, you know, undergoing a little bit of stress. And in Lowell, firefighters slipped on icy Boyver Street after tackling a fire at an apartment building. Jacinta Leonardo, the only person inside the building at the time, rushed out into temperatures in the teens with just sandals on. I grabbed my dogs and put these on and I just ran outside and put them in the car. Well, back here live in Lawrence, they're in the process of cleaning up right now. They had a sand truck on standby to help take care of the ice. The chief told us that fire earlier in the day along Ware Street was caused by a discarded cigarette. They will be looking into the cause of the fire here along South Broadway. LaToya? Jennifer Egan, thanks so much for that update. In